the first female executives there? Um, there'd been a few before me. None of them had lasted very long or had a very good time. Right. Um, and it was probably, if, if you ever had to choose a time in Channel 9's history to go, it was the worst really possible time that I chose to go. Uh, Kerry Packer had just died. Right. Eddie had just arrived. Um, ratings were down and the company was being prepared for sale. PBL was selling ACP right. magazines and Channel 9. So, um, and they'd also just endured a couple of really difficult CEOs. David Gingell, who'd been much beloved, had left and then they'd had Sam Chisholm that was, you know, so I came into an environment that was very toxic. People were really shell-shocked, really uncertain. Morale was at an all-time low. People inside the company were leaking against it. Oh, I'd wow. never seen anything like really? it. Really? Never, ever had I experienced anything like it. Because I'd come from this very rarefied, um, cosy, estrogen-soaked yeah, bosom totally. of women's magazines, where also, as an editor, I was able to create the culture that I wanted within mm. my magazine. So every magazine operates pretty autonomously at ACP. Right. Um, and so I'd basically... Yeah, been, been able to determine my working environment and the culture that I worked in. And then I came to Channel 9 where I knew nothing about TV. Most people didn't want me to be there. And um, it was a really, really tough time for the network. Because you said the first day you knew it wasn't right for you. First day I knew it wasn't right. The second day I was in tears really? and wanted to quit. And um, I knew that I couldn't because I knew that it would reflect really badly on Eddie. And I was really loyal because he'd... Um, said, come over and, you know, help me, you, you know, help me work out what women want to watch on television because I'm sick of sitting around a boardroom table with men. Yeah. And there were no women on the executive team. And Eddie's always had really strong women in his life. He's married to Carla, who is awesome. He's got his mum, he's got his sisters. Um, he likes working with women, you know. Yeah, right. He values women's opinions. So he really wanted me there, but didn't really have anything concrete for me to do. Mm. And that was probably my biggest mistake. I was so keen to get out of magazines and I'm still glad that I did because, you know, there was no other way that PBL was going to let me break my contract. They wanted right. me to go back to mags, but they, they were encouraging um, of my move to um, Channel, 9. Channel 9. But it wasn't to a job that really existed. Right. And that was a really big lesson for yeah. me, you know. I wasn't wanted. Because it was you creating a role. I was creating right. something that didn't exist. Yeah. Um, and so it was the worst professional experience of my life. It was right. so, so hard. I mean, in a first world problem, it's kind of hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had a six month old. I was struggling. I got my status eight times in seven months. So I was on antibiotics. She wasn't sleeping. Um, breastfeeding had been a disaster. I felt sick that I was bringing all this toxicity of work home with me. Yeah. I was losing weight. My fingers were bleeding because I was chewing my nails. I was waking up at four in the morning, just like I had full on onset anxiety. And I've, I've had anxiety all my life, I think, but I got it really bad when I was at Channel 9. And um, it took me a long time to get the courage to leave. Yeah.